Hey guys, welcome back to C.S. Lewis Concepts. This will be the second part. Um, we're going to continue looking at some cool concepts we can take from the screw tape letters. And I think we got some cool things ahead. Thanks for watching. So let's jump right into the first concept. Today we're only going to have two concepts because I think they're pretty important and they're also pretty lengthy compared to the ones in the last video. But today the first concept will be hold fast to the present. Now, in chapters 5 and 6 in the book, we see Screwtape start to talk to Wormwood more about the past and the future worries that the people are starting to have about the war and its outcomes. He specifically asks Wormwood, Did the patient respond to some of your terror pictures of the future? Did you work in some good self-pitying glances at the happy past? He then goes on to tell Wormwood that we want him, meaning the client, to be in the maximum uncertainty so that his mind will be filled with contradictory pictures of the future, everyone which arouses hope or fear. There is nothing like suspense and anxiety for barricading a human mind against the enemy, meaning God. Now, remember the time frame when Lewis is writing this book. He's talking to an audience that is enduring the hardships of war from hearing all of these terrible things over radio, their imagination is going wild, um, you know, the worst is, is yet to come in their mind. Screwtape tells Wormwood that if done right, this is the best time for devils to do their work and to really dig in on humans and make the worst of a bad situation. Not only are they looking at the uh, possibility of a terrible future, uh, one that could have dictatorship controlling them, there's also that wild card of not even knowing what life could be like. Um, you know, we've seen this type of uh, world almost represented in the TV show, The Man in the High Castle. Um, it's a pretty decent show. Um, it basically depicts if Hitler had won and he had come to America and their regime became over here as well as it was there. So just put yourself in their shoes and try to take their perspective for just a moment and realize the severity of the loss and everything that could occur in the future here. Not only this, but they were also thinking about the good times of the past. I don't know about you, but whenever you think of a good past moment, whenever you're going through something tough, it almost makes it worse. So these people were looking back on all their great moments, and it was making the now even worse. There were many who actually stayed hopeful, and they looked forward to a, a better future, one that showed U.S. victory, that, that had them defeating the Nazis at their own stage, and um, you know, this was a lot better, but at the same time, it was still looking forward to the future and not staying in the moment and present. While being hopeful and staying positive is never a bad thing, looking too far in the present can do damage just as well as looking to the past. So in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 31 through 34, Matthew says, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Furthermore, in Luke chapter 12, verse 25, we see Jesus ask all of his disciples, Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? So I'm almost positive that if you've read these verses or you know these verses, um, you know how good they are and you know related verses as well. So I just ask for you to take a moment and stop and actually think to yourself how much you apply these verses and related verses like these to your life. Now, a lot of us know these verses by heart. Um, we read ones like this every single day, but a lot of us, myself included, find ourselves at times not even applying these to our own life. I think good reflection here and uh, observing how you live can make some huge changes to your life and changes that you'll love to see. So this will now take us to our second and final concept of the day. It is the law of undulation. Um, it is very interesting. And I think it happens to many of us without even knowing it. Now, if you are unsure what the law of undulation is or what it has to do with, just know it has a lot to do with our good friend here, consistency. For example, undulation can be explained similar to a stock market. Um, you know, stock markets are always going up and down. They have high points and low points. The same goes for undulation. While many of you may be unfamiliar with the stock market, and in this time right now, it's probably a good thing if you are, the stock market is very volatile. It has ups and downs, and it can make you feel good or bad just depending on one day or one moment. 
Lewis begins in the book by explaining, Their bodies, passions, and imaginations are in continual change, for to be in time means to change. Their nearest approach to constancy, therefore, is undulation, the repeated return to a level from which they repeatedly fall back, a series of troughs and peaks. He goes on to give a few examples of, you know, your, your love for your friends or your wanting to be around them, um, your physical appetites. They all go up and down. And at this time, many of us will beat ourselves up, myself included. But what Lewis wants us to know is that this is a natural phenomenon given by God. Now, why would God do this, you ask? Later on in the book, Lewis explains that God relies on the troughs even more than the peaks. Some of his special favorites have gone through longer and deeper troughs than anyone else. Lewis explains that it's during these trough periods, much more than the peak periods, that we are growing into the people that God actually wants us to be. Something that I found very interesting later on is that Screwtape actually tells Wormwood that God cannot tempt virtue to us as Satan does with vice. He wants us to learn and must therefore take away his hand, even if it's going to hurt us for a little bit. This may even cause us to stumble, but God almost takes delight in our stumble to see that we're trying for him. Now I want to go back to that magic word of consistency. Whenever you're trying to get a better body by doing it through workouts, through a diet, or even trying to learn something, you'll never do it overnight. And just like being a Christian is, great things are going to take a long time sometimes. When you reach these highs, appreciate the time that you have there, and even reflect on what got you there so that you can learn to get back in the future. But when you inevitably find the lows in the tough times, you must remember this law and that God is trying to do something through you during this time. So just give yourself a chance. Give him a chance to do something through you, and don't give up on yourself when you reach these lows. The law of undulation seems so simple, yet so many of us, myself included, skip out on it sometimes and miss its great benefits that it offers. Just by simply knowing and putting this law into our lives, we can easily change our lives in the way we look at our bad times. I strongly encourage you to research the law of undulation on your own and see ways that it can help you. This is just merely the tip of the iceberg, but I just wanted to give you some pointers. And most importantly, always remember that these are just mostly my opinions and what I've taken from this book. Some of the lessons I've learned and what I think would help you. Uh, I'm not perfect, so I ask that uh, you know you take that into account, and if you think anything's wrong, go ahead and comment or send me a message. But for that, I thank you for listening, I thank you for watching, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. So I thank you, and I hope you have a good day.